And we are live for a new episode of the Electric Podcast. I'm Fred Lambert, your host, and I'm joined by Seth Winchow. How are you doing this week, Seth? I'm good, Fred. All right, let's jump in. Um, we had a ton of news about Tesla's battery technology this week. The company went after a bunch of new IP, and they also uh, published some um, new research papers. So we're going to discuss a lot of that. Uh, but let's start with the reopening of the Fremont factory because we just had a, a quick development on it. Earlier this week, um, California's governor, Gavin Newsom, he issued a statement saying that California was entering into the stage two of uh, their plan to reopen the, the state. And uh, that would involve reopening some um, retail shops and the manufacturing and logistic related to those retail shops. Uh, a lot of people saw it as a good sign that the state is going to reopen. Tesla might be able to reopen Fremont factory, especially because it was vague and the way that would be presented the manufacturing and logistic aspect of it. But uh, so in like in one statement, he just talked generally about manufacturing and logistic reopening this Friday, today. And but in other statement, he said that it was only manufacturing and logistic related to the supply chain of those retail location, which were like florist, toy store, music stores, like nothing related to cars, really. But uh, last night, we learned that uh, Elon Musk sent out an email to Tesla employees saying that because of that comment, they were uh, going to try to reopen the factory today, this afternoon, like right now, basically. And um, Nature, representative for Tesla, sent out an email to em employees too, telling them that um, they're going to try to operate with 30% of the workforce at the factory uh, to try to restart production starting today. Now, we just learned now that uh, a representative for the Almada County, which is where the factory is located, has said that Tesla actually didn't get the green light to restart the factory and it wasn't appropriate for them to uh, move forward like they did uh, today. So we don't know exactly the status of it right now, but it sounds like they might going to try to shut down Tesla's effort to, to reopen here. Yeah, the exact quote from Reuters is, we have, uh, we've we've been working with them, but we have not given them the green light, Alameda County Health Officer Erica Pan said of Tesla. We have not said it is appropriate to move forward. Yeah. So one thing that Newsom said earlier this week when he made his announcement was clearly that the state is only offering guidelines for reopening uh, and the official at the county levels are responsible for actually implementing any kind of reopening procedures. So if they're not uh, happy with it, and of course the Bay Area as a whole and Almada County included have been more aggressive than uh, the rest of the state. They were the first to issue a shelter in place order, maybe in the country, I think, definitely in California, but maybe in the country. And um, the Tesla, Tesla tried to defy that at first, if you remember back in March. Uh, they ended up complying maybe after a week or something of uh, trying to daily the effort. And it looks like right now what they're doing is like they're giving a shot again. Like the, the governor says that some manufacturing is going to reopen. So they are trying to reopen. Uh, but once again, it looks like they're going to get shut down at the county level for it. So we might not see Tesla reopening just yet. Yeah, it's definitely uh, up in the air. It seems mm -hmm. like a lot less uh, sure than what Tesla's uh, emails uh, to employees seem to make it sound like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get why Tesla is so eager to restart, not, not just on the financial basis. Of course, it, it would help to have some production coming out of Fremont Factory. You have this billion dollar asset that's not producing right now. But also on, on the basis that uh, the the they had this happen in China and Shanghai Gear Factory had to shut down for, for a week and then they reopen it and they reopen it with social distancing procedures, apparently. And now it's apparently working fine. So sorry, they see that and they're they're like, why can we don't do the same thing in, in Fremont? Like they don't that's what Elon doesn't doesn't understand. Like why why can he not just do the same thing? And um Elon also sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Something okay? wrong with, yeah, I'm fine. Um, it's not the coronavirus, don't worry, guys. And uh, I was just eating some 
almonds before I started the podcast. Uh, something stuck in my throat. Um, he went on the Drew Hogan podcast again this week, and uh, there weren't that much news Tesla related. It was a, a lot of it was about Neuralink. I think the first whole the whole hour of the podcast was about Neuralink, which is interesting, but it's kind of far out into the future that um, it's not. It, it's more like theoretical uh, talk than actually practical. But anyway. One thing that he did comment about the coronavirus is, is and it, it helped me understand Elon's perspective on it, is like he, he said that he saw the whole thing play out in China because Tesla has been monitoring the whole thing through their, their um, workforce in China where they employ like 7,000 employees. Um, and they, they saw it get somewhat resolved to a degree depending on that if you believe the Chinese numbers, the numbers coming out of China. And he was so so when the same things happened in the US, but of course that was indulged uh, widely differently. He wasn't happy about it. Yeah, I mean it seemed to it seems like he's a little frustrated um because mm -hmm. he thinks we're at the same point in the, the downslope of the curve that mm -hmm. uh China was at when um the Shanghai factory opened up again. Um, you know. Something he didn't really talk about, but uh, China's lockdown was a little bit more heavy handed uh, mm -hmm. than, than uh, the U.S. lockdown, which, you know, I, I don't think they were going out for food. They weren't going out for anything. Um, you know, being in New York, I'm, I'm kind of privy to uh, uh, Governor Cuomo's uh, talks and like, I, don't, I think 60, 70 percent of the people who are getting the coronavirus now are actually people at home, which it sounds like, you know, it's passing around in, in families and stuff. So. Um, that wouldn't happen in, in China because you are literally in your house all day, like kind of like jail. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I mean, even places like Korea, I think, uh, you know, they had another small outbreak um, at like a, a bar or something. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, we're still way, 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 way uh, far away from understanding when it's going to you know, in, in other news, uh, Apple just announced some openings of its stores in certain states. Uh, so, you know, some companies are moving forward here. So maybe we are kind of at that precipice of getting getting everything open. Yeah. And of course, like Tesla is doing the same, like where, where they can open the stores, they, they do. But if they don't have any car to sell because they cannot open Freeman factory, then, then it's not it's not worth it. So. And that's where Tesla is at right now. And uh, you could see Elon with this frustration on that podcast. That like he, the one, one thing that he said when when Joe Rogan questioned the legitimacy of the Chinese numbers, saying that uh, new cases are extremely low, extremely rare right now, uh, and that like you know they've, they've, there's been a report that of China like hiding like thousands and thousands of deaths uh, related to the virus, and Elon's comeback was we have 7,000 employees at Tesla in China and none of them died um, <laughs> even said like we would know because we we do payroll and no one so I don't know if you actually checked that information because 7,000 employees like even if no coronavirus like people die every now and again yeah but but, but still it was it was an interesting way to put it for sure yeah he's definitely got a like a uh, outlier uh, point of view on on the coronavirus mm -hmm. and and we did a I don't know if we're going to talk about this now, but we did a post on um, a survey done um, and it doesn't seem like uh, Tesla employees are quite on the same page as Elon's uh, point of view there. Yeah, to be fair, it was a small sample, but it was uh, at least you could confirm that it was as 50 plus employees because it was through blind and blind can confirm, uh, verify with employee emails and whatnot. But yeah, the majority of them uh, thinks that Elon's Twitter right now is uh, Twitter rents are arming the company. And, you know, our readers who are heavily, heavily Elon fans, generally speaking, mm -hmm. uh, were also, uh, I think, what, 40% uh, thought that it was negatively affecting the company mm -hmm. and only and only like 16, 17, something like that percent thought it was benefiting the company. I don't know how you could think it was benefiting, but anyway. <laughs> um, well, so, if if they're more aggr if he's more aggressive about it, and they actually end up because of it opening sooner, then maybe it take a bit if it's a company. Yeah, and, and if he's right in the end, um, yeah, maybe that'll make him seem smarter. But um, 
but yeah, it was but, obviously wrong about the virus on, on things like that we, we already know about so it, so like it, it would be hard for him to like claim victory at the end ah, i was right about the like you know we weren't, we weren't exactly right <laughs> no, i do no, remember I mean, you saying that new cases in the u.s will be near zero by the end of april and yeah actually and what's wasn't frustrating even what's frustrating about that is it not only affect like Basically, you should shut up about the whole thing right now yeah. on Twitter anyway. But what's frustrating is like not only is he taking out his like, you know, ability to to navigate the coronavirus with these like false claims or, you know, in, incorrect predictions. Mm -hmm. But he's also like kind of, you know, Elon's not the super genius anymore. He's kind of, you know, you know, I don't want to say like a conspiracy mm -hmm. theorist, but he's like on the other end of the spectrum when it comes to certain things so like that kind of it's kind of a bummer like as a tesla fan i'm like you know i mean i i wouldn't go as that far myself like because because he's definitely right about some things then when you see like clear up the data like there, there's a lot oh, yeah. of problem with the data and everything like that so like he has some good points about it it's, it's just that um he is going the presentation is not there with the whole like freedom free america like yeah especially in, in this day and age where it's such a team bait mentality like a tribal mentality where it's right. us versus them and everything so when someone says that then you put elon musk in the same categories than those gun totting people that are going in protests right now um which <laughs> is not good look for him no, even though like uh you, you don't have to put him in the same category like it's it, there's a broader spectrum than that i think right. but that, that's how a lot of people see it unfortunately right all right let's let, let's move to them so basically in conclusion we don't know exactly what's going to happen with free, free month factory right now i would assume that tesla is not going to be able to restart production today as, as they were trying to but maybe they will still like go through and like what are they gonna do? Are they gonna sell the Fremont police after us? Like <laughs> they, they, they might do that. I don't know. Um, but we'll we'll keep you updated in the next few hours if there's any uh, development. But the the team of the this week that we basically had a team on the track when it comes to our Tesla reporting that was like battery news, bat, battery IP, battery research paper. There was a lot of things that came out. When I go through them, and of course, that's all leading up to the battery day, which Tesla's gonna lay out their clear plan for uh, in house battery production. But what we got right now is an update on the million mile battery thing that uh, we reported on a few months ago. So things came out of uh, Jeff Don's team in, in, in uh, Dallas University in uh, Halifax, Canada. So th this whole new electro, the single crystal NMC cathode, and then a new electrolyte, and later on we also reported on new electrode. So this time, they are they are using um, it's basically an update on that research paper, which was based on actual battery cells. So we're not talking about like some theory about a new breakthrough or anything like that. I'm talking about cells that they were able to test uh, and that l result in a longer. Um, higher longevity longer for for the for the battery cells so they can go through more cycles which re, in term of electric cars it, it, it result in um more mileage over time but this this new paper here uh, it's the, basically the same thing but with a different type of um and nickel manganese cobalt cell uh, and the big the highlight here really is like lower cobalt so they made that cell with about 20 percent cobalt which is uh, roughly half of the previous version of the cell and they did it while maintaining that because the cobalt thing like everyone wants to get rid of cobalt inside the cells because of um political reason really like the the fact that it's related to what a lot of it comes from Congo, and there's a lot of very bad condition for mining there, including uh, child labor. And uh, I think at some point there was even a possible involvement with slave labor there. I mean, I think child labor is basically slave labor. Like, you don't have a say in it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, but at the same time, 
a higher cobalt level in battery cells that have been linked to like just better performing battery cells. So a lot of people say, all right, if you take out the cobalt, then you just result in a worse cell. But with these new electrolyte that they put on the cell, uh, they are able to still have fewer cobalt in it, less percentage of cobalt and uh, a better cell. And that's what they achieve with this one here. So this, this new NMC cell basically has also maintain the higher energy density of an NCA cell, but with an M NMC uh, chemistry with lower cobalt. So all positive stuff, basically. They still manage this very high 4,000 plus cycle um, performance, which you're going to need in an electric car. But what a source told me here is that this version of it, so they're basically patenting, or trying to patent and research all those different uh, chemistries. And this one might actually be used for the energy sector. Yeah, stationary energy storage I'm talking about. So power walls, power pack, and now the, now the new, new mega pack to, would be involved in that. And source said that it might even actually already be in production too. So that would be interesting. So new power walls, power pack, mega pack might actually already have those cells with the different chemistries. Because people have always been talking about like, oh, assuming that these new chemistries are for Tesla's in-house cells, but that, that's not necessarily true. I mean, Tesla has for a long time made chemistry development on the cells and just passed it on to Panasonic and other suppliers to just make the cells with the, the slightly different chemistries. So that might be the case here too. And that has, of course, great implications because that's one of the thing of stationary storage. They have sometimes, depending on the market condition, a longer uh, return on investment. Like in places like Australia, it's no problem. Like the return on investment is pretty quick. But um, here in the US, depending on specific markets, a lot of places, like like for you example, for with your power walls, they are mainly there for backup power. Like that, that's where you see most of the value, I assume. Like in terms of uh, like net metering and, and things like that, in time of use, it would it would be a long time before it would be a, a good return on investment, right? Yeah, I mean. Uh... That, you know, the best case scenario, like for, uh, well, two, there's two scenarios for power walls. One is you're doing uh, shifting of electric usage. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have the, the high uh, periods of time, um, high cost periods of time, you go off the power wall then and then charge the power wall either through the sun or through uh, the grid uh, during the low periods of time. And then the other mm -hmm. thing uh, with the power walls is when... The grid goes down, it snaps over, and, and you your house is powered off the power wall. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, clearly, like improvements there would be would be welcome. Yeah, because there's some places like we're talking about six, seven years of um, return on investment on a power wall, right? And uh, that stuff, of course, warranty it for ten years, so it's not that bad. But then you just have a four years of warranty on. Um, where the product is actually having a financial benefit to you. So the longer that period is, the better it is for the customer. Yeah. So knowing that your, your battery is going to last not just 10 years, but 15, 20 years, then now that's starting to make a ton of sense to have these in every home, really. Right. And, you know, uh, we did the calculations and we were, our payback's like six or seven years in Vermont. Um, mm. I, you know, if the, if the, like you said, if the warranty goes 20 years, I mean, we're, we're on a 10 year now, so we're probably in good shape. Like it's hard to imagine a scenario mm -hmm. where we're not going to get our money back. But um, if you do that over 20 years, it even makes more sense mm -hmm. with the time shifting. Um, mm -hmm. As for the backup, I, I still wonder um, if it's going to make more sense in the long run to, to pull the batteries out of your car, not, you know, not literally pull the batteries out of the car, but pull the electricity out of your car for the rare backup case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's the fear of doing that um, vehicle to home right. is that if you're doing too often, you're just, you're just uh, affecting, you're putting more cycles on your car battery, which might affect the longevity of it. Right. But if you're not doing that for time of use purposes, you're doing just for backup purposes. I mean, depending on where you're located, it's not that often. I mean, hopefully. Um, yeah, hopefully there's some there's some places that are known to be worse than others in terms of brownouts and blackouts, but 
Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not like backing up your house is certainly not any worse than, you know, riding your car around. Uh, your house right. isn't going to use like 50 kilowatts, which, mm -hmm. you know, is like kind of, you know, getting up to highway speed pretty easily. Um, so you're definitely not going to tax your batteries too much on a, on a, you know, a few backup cycles versus, um, you know, driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. So some other battery improvements here, we saw a new patent application um, that Elon even commented on saying that it's more important than its sound. Okay. So let me tell you how it sounds. It's a, bad, it's a patent on a battery cell with a tabless electrode. So it's basically a brand new way to assemble a cell uh, to reduce the resistance in the cell itself. Um, but from what I like, I'm not an expert in that, of course, but from what I, I, I take from the patent application, it's completely different way to, to build a battery cell here, uh, or at least like a, a big step. But the goal is to reduce the resistance by making the um, electrode tabless. So Elon says it's more important than it sounds. So we're not sure exactly what he means by that, because again, it's uh, far from a clear, like, oh, yes, it, it, it reduced your distance in the cell, but <laughs> more important than it sounds. Like, what, what does that mean from there? Uh, my only speculation on it is that it might be something they need to do as part of moving away from a module type of um, design for the battery pack. So Elon has been talking about that lately, saying that you might they might not need to actually do modules. Right now, you, you take the cells, they put the cells in modules, they put the modules in a battery pack. Uh, so there's a certain number of cells per module and a certain more number of modules per pack. But Elon alluded that you might not need to have an actual modules and you can just skip that step and just do cells to pack. So instead of having like a dozen modules with a few hundred cells in it, you would have just thousands of cells in one single big battery pack. Um, of course, the modules have their benefit in terms like of uh, thermal management. You can have like cooling on them uh, and the cooling can be managed per modules. But uh, it's an interesting theory, I think. We won't know more until the battery day, probably, but uh, I have no other um, way to explain this comment about it being more important than it sounds. Yeah, so I was reading a comment, I think, um, I can't remember where it was, but it might have been on our post um, about this, and it sounds like it's going to make manufacturing quite a bit easier because you don't have to have that tab. Mm -hmm. But also, it's going to make uh, the resistance lower, yeah. Because um, you know you don't have to go through one single point of entry. You're going on the on the outside of the mm -hmm. thing, which like it doesn't seem like. Well, why would you ever have done it the other way? But you know, I don't know battery technology that mm -hmm. well. So, but it's a big deal. So we, we're going to probably learn more about it on um, on the battery day. But it, it sounds more like something that is going to be part of a. a of a broader thing really like so it, it might be something that could be combined with the other like the chemistry changes that they're doing to the battery so that's that's a change to the actual battery format of the cell uh, so tesla is really attacking this on all different fronts which is uh, very interesting uh, another a little bit more out there was a, a research paper that uh, tesla's uh, jeff don team uh, published earlier this week and it's about an hybrid lithium metal and uh, lithium high end cell which basically like the the only way i could put it like i i i, I refer to it as a range all electric range extender because that's the thing that makes the most sense to me but it's not a perfect analogy of course so so the the, the problem with lithium metal cell is that they do offer a great energy density but they're, they're not great for multiple cycling, so they don't last that long. Um, but what the Don, Jeff Don's team put together, and it, it was put together with two Tesla engineers too, 
uh, and financed by Tesla, this new research, which is, again, it's early stage research. It's not going to be in production anytime soon if it ever gets to production, but I, I thought it was an interesting concept. So with this hybrid version of the cell, the cell can operate in lithium ion mode and can operate in uh, lithium air, uh, metal, lithium metal mode, which offers different uh, energy density. But you would want to operate the cell most of the time in lithium ion mode because it's the version of it that's going to have the highest, long, the, the best longevity. The example that he gave was if you put this in an electric car, it would deliver a daily range on the lithium ion version of the battery of 400 kilometers. And then 480 could be achieved if you cycle the cell on the lithium metal uh, mode. They call it a mode. So I'm not, I'm not even sure how they switch between the mode, but apparently they can with this hybrid version of the cell. So the right. idea is that you get 400 miles for your daily driving, and then if you need it, if you need like an 80 kilometers more, if you need you're going on a road trip, you could change within the car the cycle of the cell to a lithium metal cycle, which would result in the cell degrading a little bit faster, but it would enable you to do a longer road trip. So and you would use that a few times a year. Yeah, when you need to. And they still talk about achieving a decent number of cycle on the lithium metal mode of the cell. So there's that too. Like it's not like you're gonna. Uh, but I feel like some people are even if you, you can get like let's say a hundred cycles all, all, all of the lithium metal mode, uh, which would, would technically be like a hundred road trips or whatever. Which if people do like five a year, that that's still a lot. Like uh, that, that's still like 20, 20 years of uh, of road tripping. So. It, even if like the math makes sense, like some people would be ah, oh, like I don't want to cycle my car or lead some metal because it's gonna degrade faster or something. So I, I think there'd be like some uh, psychological barrier to it. Um, but yeah, technically, but... it makes sense. Like te technically, like we we do drive our commute is much shorter, and we carry a, a bigger battery pack that we never actually use that much. We do sometimes, but you, so ninety percent of the time. We use like 20% or 30% of the pack, which I think that's the actual figures are, are, are closer to that, uh, which is why that's interesting. But at the same time, the numbers they're talking about, like going for 400 kilometers to 480, it is not that big of a difference here. So would you really like need to have like all different chemistry for that little of a difference? Yeah. And, and also we're, like the fact that we're filling our batteries all the way 100% to go on these trips already. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know that filling it to 100% degrades the battery a little bit faster than keeping it, you know, nine, 80 or 90% full. Um, so we're already kind of doing this, you know, experiment. And I would say, like, some people are definitely not, you know, they never want to charge their batteries fully. But mm -hmm. other people are like, hey, I don't care. Like, I'm just going to charge it fully and see what, you know, whatever happens. Um, you know, if you have a lease, like, you don't have any incentive not to charge it fully for instance mm -hmm. um in fact like my tesla uh experience guy or whatever was like yeah just you got a three-year lease you just you know <laughs> charge it to 100 percent. who cares and i was like oh, all right uh so you know I, I it's a it's an interesting uh problem or you know whatever to solve I just don't know if it's going to be that big of it. You know, it sounds like a, a complicated system to like switch. Yeah, that's my my concern too. Yeah, but and you're it's not like you get double the range or something crazy. You just get a small amount. Yeah, if it was something like that, like that might be very interesting. If it makes sense cost wise too, of course. Like there's a, there's a lot of thing at plays here, but I think it's it's definitely something worth researching. Like they, then that's what they did here. Like they came up with that cell, they tested it, and it, it works. So at least we know that it's a possible solution. Now, whether it's going to be a needed solution, whether it's going to be an actual feasible solution, that's another thing. Right. Okay. One more battery news this week. Uh, we got a report from Korea that says that Tesla ordered a bunch of battery making machines. So if you needed more confirmation that Tesla is going to make their own cell, which I doubt you needed, but here's more. So 
it's one of those giant like South Korean conglomerates, this uh, Hanwha. So I wasn't that familiar with the Hanwha group, but we here in the US we do know them for their solar modules and cells, though mm -hmm. they're, they're they're pretty big on that. But apparently it's a in Korea, it's a giant conglomerate that do a bunch of industrial thing, and including the uh some battery formation equipment, and that's what Tesla ordered for them. So Battery formation process is, quoting here from analog, battery formation is the process of performing the initial charge discharge operation on the battery cell. During this stage, special electrochemical solid electrolyte interface will be formed at the ele electrode, mainly on an anode. Mm -hmm. at, form at the electrode, again, okay, not sure what it means that, but apparently it's one of the last stages of making a new battery cell. So. They still apparently ordered a bunch of equipment from them. There was another report from uh, Korea that talked about where the equipment is supposed to go, but that report, like it came out after the original comment from Enqua, so, so, so NOI, which so we know that that's actually happened. But the other report talked about like the uh, uh, equipment going to Fremont, Nevada, Berlin, and Shanghai, which. I uh, I call it unconfirmed because uh, we didn't have any direct word from Anwar about that, and it just sounds like they listed all Tesla's location basically. So uh, though we know that for sure Tesla is gonna make cells in Berlin at one point, that Tesla confirmed that. Uh, we know that they are making some in Fremont as part of the pilot production line, so that's also fair. But Nevada and Shanghai, like that, uh, I, I wouldn't know for sure. Though it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense for sure. All right, moving on to Auto Bidder. So that's actually a new product from Tesla. It's been out for a while, but we never knew about it. Uh, it came out um, last weekend after a report came out from the UK where they said that Tesla was filing to uh, become some kind of uh, electricity provider, so to act as an electric utility in the UK. And as part of the filing, they did mention Autobiter. And then I found on Tesla's website that they actually have a page for Autobiter, which they describe as an independent power producer utilities. Oh, not oh, sorry, they provide the Autobiter provides independent power producer utilities and capital partner the ability to autonomously monetize battery assets. Autobidder is a real-time trading and control platform that provides value-based asset management and portfolio automation, enabling owners and operators to configure operational strategies that maximize revenue according to the business objective and risk preferences. So what it is basically, and if you're watching on YouTube here, we have a screenshot of the UI of Autobidder. It's, it's software that manage your uh, energy storage system, um, mainly battery packs uh, connected to a grid system and provide grid services like frequency um, management and also peak shaving and things like that. And the platform is basically used by the owner of the battery asset. And Tesla confirmed that it is in use in uh, the Arnsdale battery system which uh, probably better known as the Tesla big battery, the world of world's biggest battery. It's in, in, in South Australia. Uh, we talked about it a lot. And that thing is uh, operated by uh, NeoN, which is um, a renewable French, uh, renewable energy company. So my understanding is that Tesla provide this auto bidder as a product, as a service to NeoN and other companies too, that they also sold uh, power packs and mega packs uh, too and they use uh, that software that those companies use that software to uh, basically sell the battery pack services to the electric utilities uh, which yeah i mean an interesting concept like it's uh definitely a step toward tesla like go ahead yeah well i mean the the initial reports that, that you know tesla was becoming a uh an energy company, this doesn't really sound like they're doing that. It sounds like more like, and, and I applaud you for like digging deeper into mm -hmm. that report mm -hmm. because everybody was kind of like, oh, Tesla, whatever. but mm -hmm. this thing sounds like uh, 
Tesla's uh, customers who order these huge battery packs mm. need a way to uh, you know monetize them, and uh, you know you need a lot of inputs because there's a lot of different variables happening mm. in you know when to produce uh, electricity from the battery, when to bring in electricity from the battery, when to idle. And, um, you know, there's like weather, like if you're doing solar, there's, or, or even if you're not doing solar with like air conditioning and stuff like that, um, there's usage all over, like just, just an infinite number of variables. So it sounds like this software is kind of grabbing all those variables, allowing you to put in some, you know, your own, like, you know, maybe it's going out and seeing the weather or mm -hmm. it's, uh, using historical data, um, to, to kind of optimize the uh the battery usage so you know even if you know just a small bit of uh optimization is probably adding thousands you know tons of money to the value of these things so i'm sure this this product is really beneficial to its, the uh, tesla's customers yeah and uh, through some of my search uh, i was also able to confirm that the same product is used by uh, green mountain power in vermont to manage this as power walls. So this is also interesting on the front that you could see the product being used by electric utilities like Green Mountain Power to manage a bunch of distributed assets, which is the case with the power walls there in Vermont. They have thousands of them already now, um, including the ones at your house. So you could you could see a future where this auto builder product is really manage a bunch of different renewable energy asset, energy storage asset and uh, energy utility bids on using those assets and then the owner of those assets gets gets the money from it uh on on a much larger distributed level so all the way down to like homeowners that have those assets at their house solar and, and power walls um so yeah it's a it's an interesting where we see a much more which is something that that people would in infrastructure I've been asking for a while, just a much smarter grid. And I think that's what we're starting to see here, uh, Tesla getting into that business of a smart grid. So eventually I think, yeah, it could, could result in some kind of being part of Tesla's electric utility plan. And of course, if you remember Elon's comment saying that Tesla Energy might become this global distributed electric utility that becomes even bigger than Tesla's automotive business. I think this this could be part of a plan here. Yep. Uh, Tesla Fremont reopening. We already talked about it. Uh, new update. So there was a relatively small new software update that was pushed this week, uh, 2020.16. A uh, few update is the redesign of the Tesla toy box. So nothing crazy here. Just all the things like the smart, uh, the, the, not the smart, the, the fart machine and whatnot. They are now more neatly arranged than in this little weird toy box that Tesla had before. Um, this one is kind of interesting, the nearby charging station. So Tesla now has, like, has codified it with like just three different lightning bolts and you can filter. So one lightning bolt for lower power station, two for level two station, I assume three for uh, EC fast charging. And you can uh, filter the station with this uh, quick um, uh, icons of one to three lightning bolt. So again, small update. Uh, yeah. Last one is the dash cam improvement. So that one is actually uh, a lot of fun. Well, it's practical, I should say instead. As most of you know, if you were to use the Tesla cam system or the sentry mode system, you need to have a storage device, a USB storage device plugged to your car. And uh, it needs to be formatted. Now, I forget which format, but it needs to be formatted, I think fat, 56 or am I meeting that up? Anyway, it needs to be formatted in a certain way, which you need to do yourself on your computer. And then you create a file, a file with the right name on it for Tesla to uh, put the footage in that uh, file. Now, uh, with the new dash cam improvement, you just have to plug your USB storage device, so whether like a thumb drive or a SSD, and this, in the dash cam settings, you have an option to format the USB drive automatically, and it will also create the right folders for you for the files to, to be saved in. So a uh, fun and easy way to. 
uh, get that set up on because of course like I, I still see the nowadays like people like not using the dash cam like I get on the Tesla that's one of the first thing I, I check if the owner actually like have the uh, dash cam button on and a bunch of people don't use it I mean if uh, it's well if you already have a dash cam I get it like it's, to a degree like but nowadays especially if you have like AP2 cars like with cameras on the sides and everything like Tesla's Tesla cam and sentry mode uh is probably better than any dash cam i know on the market right now so i don't i don't see any reason not to use it yeah and all you have to do is throw in a usb stick it's not really yeah usb stick or i actually recommend an uh, ssd nowadays yeah. because it's, especially if you want to use sentry mode and you park the car in public sometime uh the, those sentry mode events can can rack up pretty quick uh, so more storage is good and you don't always have to like watch it anyway like if all the events come in like if you come back to your car and you look around and even though you had like a bunch of sentry mode events but your car seems fine nothing happened to it if you have like eight uh, sentry mode events you don't have to go through them and look them up but i heard that tesla is doing some improvement is working on some things on that front that could be helpful too where they, they will sort of like detect objects in the sentry mode event so they use their uh, computer vision system not just to activate the sentry mode like they do now but they're going to be able to mark like oh there's there was an object that came in in that so they're going to be able to tell you where to look when to look and what events um that that could be really a time saver i would i would like a, a notification to come up with like pictures you know in the tesla app you know yeah, that would be nice too that I, yeah, you know if, if, if you're watching a movie at the mall and a notification comes up and it, you know a big yeah. event happened yeah. well there's a notification if there's some big event happen like if there's different level of the alarm on the sentry mode right the highest level like is is an audible alarm and flashing the lights and everything and it's supposed to send you a notification on your app uh but yeah it would be nice if an actual like push a picture like this is happening right now yeah <laughs> that could be fun um the roadster all right so that's was the main probably the main piece of news that came out of the joe rogan interview related to tesla so rogan asked him like when when is he gonna be able to actually get one of those roadster and elon was being a little bit vague about it and <laughs> then he started listing a bunch of things that needs to happen before tesla released the new roadster and those things included ramping up model wire production that one we can put aside because it's pretty vague getting gigafactory berlin to production this one right now the official timeline is july 2021 uh expanding go factory shanghai that's also pretty vague getting tesla semi to production now we know that that's 2021 not sure when uh and the last one getting tesla cyber truck to production and then uh Rogan even had him confirm that because he was like, but he was like, but the roadster is coming before the Cybertruck, right? And he was like, eh, no, not really. Like <laughs> Cybertruck is probably the priority here. Uh, he called um, he, he called dessert. Like <laughs> it was a, uh, the roadster was, is the dessert. It's not a main meal. It's not a main course. Um, so basically, what that does, if you consider that the, the Cybertruck is only coming in late 2021, and that's base case scenario, really, best case scenario, because... Yeah, they don't even have a factory yet, or a location yeah. for a factory. Yeah, they don't even have the location for the factory. Apparently, that's coming in the next few weeks, which is nice, but still, like, once they have the location, they have to build it, then they have to build start production in it. So, like, best case scenario, late 2021. So that pushed the roadster most likely 2022 which is now two years late over the original announcement in 2020. So now that's starting to be a bigger deal here. Uh, on the bright side, if you consider that on the bright side, you did see that the weight is gonna be worded, okay? Mm -hmm. But then he all repeated the same thing about like the 1.9 seconds, zero to 60 and things like that only being the base version uh, without confirming any new spec for the higher end version. Didn't, uh, didn't he ratchet up the or didn't Tesla say uh, it had changed from 1.9 seconds, 0 to 60 to 2.1 at some point? No, I think so. That's some people that put like the Canadian version of the website instead of okay. something. And then they have to do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, which is right. 62 miles per hour. 
he did reiterate also that the SpaceX package, which uh, consists of those uh, Kobler thrusters that he was talking about before, that that's still part of the plan. So that's probably still going to be the um, what what constitute the IAN version of it that's going to do better than 1.9 seconds. I mean, that's disappointing, <laughs> especially uh, for us since we uh, apparently have some runster coming as part of the RFO program. But where where it starts running really crazy, I think, is um like the referral program is one thing like but if someone put like Tesla was asking for two hundred fifty thousand dollars deposit on this thing for the, the, the I, I can't program. imagine anybody still has their yeah yeah you have to give that up at that point like if he keeps pushing it like that like like when he when he said that it wasn't a priority anymore it's like okay not priority but maybe okay maybe 2021 maybe something like that but now at this point when he says now we got Put the cyber truck out first oh okay cyber truck was a bill just a few months ago just like six months ago and how long is the line going to be for these things like i mean if they make any you know like obviously people are going to want them i'm, I'm certainly going to be mm. excited to see them but mm. like i don't think a two hundred fifty thousand dollar car is anywhere near mainstream so there's going to be a limited number of people like maybe you get it a month later or something i don't know yeah so what you mean is like the reservation process is not that. I mean, I I don't know. Uh, like you, you know when Tesla released a new like high end Model S, like a lot of people upgrades to it. Right. Like there's a lot of Model S performance out there, and like the, those cars are one hundred fifty thousand dollars sometimes, or at least maybe not nowadays. Like you can get them cheaper a little bit, but like for for a while they were one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So there's a there's I think there's a big group of people out there. When I say big, I mean in in the thousands at least maybe up to ten thousand of them that always won the highest performance tesla out there that thing so that's a realistically big market okay here's a question if tesla said to you uh let's say august um instead of getting your roadster um we will let you have a plaid model s would today would you do that Well, technically, I have two Roadster coming as part uh, of the program. Right. So, yeah, I would probably do it. For one of them. For one of them, but I right. really want that Roadster. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of like, I, I'm kind of like, I would I wouldn't, like, I, I don't know if I'd really want a Roadster. Like, I would, it would certainly be cool to drive in. It would be awesome to take to a track. But, like, on a day to day basis, do you really want to climb yeah. into like a really small car? Like, probably, but like, you're you're afraid of the middle life crisis comments that would come with it. Oh, I would I would I'm already past that. I think. But <laughs> I think uh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like I want to get into a super small car. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really low to the ground every day. Yeah, and also, yeah. You have a family too, so when when you get on the road, you most of the time you get on the road with with the family and everything. So it's a, definitely like not like you're probably not the target market for it. But like for someone for myself, like right. I don't have any kids or anything like that. I have a girlfriend. We fit two in the car. So like if we decide to do a road trip or something, that that's a car that makes sense for us. So like uh, uh, even like this is so makes we get a lot more use out of it for sure. Right, six hundred mile range would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The first thing I want to do with it is like travel the country with it, like go cross country. That would be awesome because right. you can actually do it. That the, with minimum charging, um, but yeah. Also, that acceleration, like zero to sixty in w to under two seconds, that's like you know hy hypercar speed, and it's mm -hmm. it's like it's damaging. Like I, I don't know that I'd want I would ever want to use that. Like it, it's painful. Uh, I you know I have a uh, e bike right now from Frey. Um, it's a Chinese mm -hmm. company and. Um, it's got like a Bafang Ultra Motor, which is like kind of the crazy one. And uh, when I hit the throttle or I even pedal assist, it kind of like jumps out from under me. And I like I just wonder like if that's going to be the case with the Roadster, if it's just too much car. But we'll see. Yeah. Probably it is, but you, you, you kind of want to experience it a few times still. Right. In safe conditions, of course. But yeah, I mean, it's also... The point of it, like they're being delayed another two years, 
for reservation holders makes mo no sense whatsoever anymore. So it, it shows the continuously uh, degrading value of uh, the of this as reservation program. Like we've been saying since the mole three, we're like, all right, like the mole Y program, the reservation program, that's not that important. Uh, and that's really just the nail on the coffin of Tesla's reservation, really. That right. Same thing with uh, like the Tesla Semi, where when those reservations were increased, like twenty thousand dollars a reservation, and then Tesla again delayed it. Like the, there's just they're losing credibility on the reservation process. Right. Um, then for 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 the referral program side, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, you guys cannot complain because you guys are getting the car for free, but which I get the point to a degree, but at the same time, the, the car, nothing was is for free in, in life. Like Tesla was using the car to boost the referral program, uh, which helped them a lot in, the, in that time of sales because people did a lot more promotion of the, of the referral program. Um, so Tesla did use that with the promise of, of uh, making those cars and now they keep delaying making those cars. So there's also uh, an aspect to it. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure people are playing a violin for you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying like be be mad for me. Like that. That's not. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that it's still part of it. Like technically, Tesla had to put some money aside from that, right, uh, in their balance sheet. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, you would think yes, but I. I don't think that was. I mean, frankly, I don't even know that Elon was fully aware of the referral program because it seemed like at one point. He he found out about it and just shut it all down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I like frankly, I don't even. I, I don't know. I think there was some mis miscommunication. Yeah, it got, it got all the control for sure. At one point, I mean, I was surprised too when they said like I, I thought it was a joke when they said you can get a second one. Yeah, <laughs> Ben like, ben, no. Su ben Sullins came out and said, "Hey, I got a second Roadster," and I was like, "What the yeah. like?" I mean, one yeah. Roadster was already kind of nutty. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Bjorn Nyland tried to get a third one. Right. <laughs> I was like, "What?" The Right. <laughs> it's like, oh well, if you could get a second one, that makes sense. And technically, it wasn't wrong. It made sense because yeah, if you can get a second one, why not? Yeah, yeah, because if Tesla was calculating, okay, if these guys like I don't, I don't remember anymore uh, how many cars it was per Roadster, but you need fifty five, I think you need, you needed it. something like that. Yeah. So they, they calculated that right, if the El Paso sell fifty five cars and normally it cost us like I don't know, like three thousand dollars per car for promotion to, to, to try to get the sell done uh well this um has enough value for us to to give them a roaster so it made sense but <laughs> like uh i tell my last tally was like 88 free roadsters that tesla was uh, owed people so like now now that's like a decent production run of like just free roadster and then that doesn't account all the discounted roadster because you you will you were building up a discount up to 55. So right. there's plenty more people like literally hundreds more people that uh, are are like between 10, 10 and like 90 percent discount on the roadsters and, and those, those, are aren't, those aren't just like the base model roadsters those are founder series yeah roadsters. And those so. people are gonna are gonna wonder <laughs> those people are gonna want those uh those, those roadsters because like why not why like even if it's just a 10 percent discount it's 10 percent on two hundred thousand dollars it's twenty thousand dollars that you're leaving on the table you, you, you're gonna do it even if it's just to sell it right away yeah I, there's no way tesla really thought that one out <laughs> it yeah. just doesn't make financial sense at all mm -hmm. um, anyway. yeah let's move on from tesla news with uh volkswagen id3 uh, got a confirmed date for when you're gonna be able to change your reservation into an order and that's gonna be june 17. it's just for the first edition ones which are a bit more expensive but there's been a lot of talk about possible delays for the ID3 and Volkswagen has been clear. We are still going to launch it this summer. Apparently they're going to try to launch it with like 30,000 cars at the same time, like deliver them almost the same time, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. I guess but, when you're Volkswagen big, you can do stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, if, if they actually do that, it's going to be a, Giant boost to European car sales, electric car sales in, in one shot because 30,000 cars is a lot for uh, European sales. Actually, especially in the coronavirus crisis right now that is plummeting the gasoline car sales, it's going to put the mix of electric cars, which was a 10%, I think, uh, last month, which was already a big jump because like 
uh, Cars and car sales were way down, it's going to put them <laughs> probably like closer to 20 percent or something like that. If the market for gasoline remains low in the coming months, I think some people are predicting uh, a rapid uh, uh, ramp up. Because yeah, was I wonder if Volkswagen has any regret in in holding back on some of these. Um, it sounds like software is kind of the major mm -hmm. hang up at this point. I mean, if they could have got, you know, a few sold at the end of last year and at the beginning of this year before everything went nuts, um, mm -hmm. that would have been probably a good thing for them. Yeah. But, but I'm it, sure like... The, it's the, a battery issue probably. <laughs> you know, like a lot of people were saying that. I, I posted this week. I think that's my next post anyway. Uh, like next move is the the one... Uh, was it my next post? Yeah, my next post. Um Next move is the, the I don't know, they have a weird situation, but the, the company is the, the rent out the electric cars, but they have now like a growing like YouTube channel in Germany where they, 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 they talk about electric cars. So it's like a big part of the business now. And we reported on them earlier this year because they found the actual parking lots where there's thousands of ID3 out there that are just sitting there for, uh, being stockpiled. And because they found it like, and, uh, Kudos to Volkswagen for that. They were like, all right, I'll, I'll invite you to the actual factory so you can check out the factory and then what's happening with it. Because, of course, that that post from Next Move uh, created a lot of speculation about what, what Volkswagen is doing with those ID3s. And um, uh, what's all the stuff about the ID3 was pretty simple. They said they, they did that battery pack and they were installing battery packs in them. So that, that uh, killed a lot of that speculation. And uh, the whole software thing too, apparently that's been also blown out of proportion where, where it's it's more like just refinements and like you're not happy with the user interface, which they shouldn't be because <laughs> most automakers are way behind Tesla on that front. Um, and, uh, and, but, but, when you when you remember when Tesla first launched the Model 3, 2, there was a bunch of software problems and features that weren't released. So they just it's just a different approach for them where they're waiting until everything is ironed out before launching it. So it's just a different way to do it. But um, one of the most interesting that came out of uh, his visit of the factory, of Next Moon's visit of the factory, was uh, that they confirmed that the ID4 was on the production line already and being produced. So uh, the ID4 is this like crossover. Um, it's still based on the MEV platform, so it has similar capabilities as the ID3, but in the little bigger SUV-like small SUV crossover uh, form factor. And it's already in production. It was supposed to launch later this year, but it's already in production. They're probably doing the same thing they do with the ID3. So production is starting, and they're gonna uh, build up some inventory and launching at the same time with with higher inventory. But the most exciting thing about the ID4, of course, is that it's going to be the first uh, global MEB VW electric vehicle it's because the ID3 is only for the European market right now. So the ID4 is going to be offered in the US. It's going to be offered in China. It's going to be actually produced in the US. Um, so if they are being produced right now in Germany, we're all full that they are making progress in production. And uh, where are they being produced? Uh, it's in Tennessee, I think. Uh I think the batteries are in Tennessee. No, I don't know. It's it's somewhere in the south, like South Carolina yeah. or Georgia or something. Yeah, I want to say Tennessee, but anyway. And I'm pretty that car is going to start around forty thousand dollars, so it's going to be a, a sort of a Model Y competitor. And, and that, oh yeah, that's the other thing that came out of that post that he said that it was same size as the Model Y because we haven't seen the car much really. Yeah, we have a picture of it here. Because it was supposed to be unveiled um, at the New York Auto Show, which was canceled because of the coronavirus. Yep. So we 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 have picture of the ID Cross, which was the concept on which the production version was supposed to be based. Well, well the ID Four now it's it's known as. So we don't know exactly the final form factor of it, but. Uh, Next Move saw the production version on the production line and, and said that it was very much Tesla Model Y type of form factor, which is very interesting. And at a starting price of around forty thousand dollars, it should be very competitive. But also, it's a, I mean, Tesla is trying to put himself more in a premium kind of segment, so competitive more with like Audi and then all you like VM uh, VW is more of a. I mean, some people consider VW like mid luxury. I wouldn't necessarily go that far, but BMW. 
Uh, VW. Yeah, VW. Uh, I would go mid tier. They, yeah. you know, they they have some really like super small cars, like the Polo or whatever. Yeah. Um, that are like, like super cheap in Europe, but in the U.S., they kind of bring over the nice stuff. Mm -hmm. And in the same category is going to be the or same form factor, the Audi Q4 e-tron. And we learned this week that it's apparently going to start at forty five thousand dollars. I'm putting a grain of salt on this because the, the report came from Car and Driver. Where they, they did a whole profile of it in their latest edition, but they didn't go into details about where they got that price from. But they definitely were uh, Audi seemed involved in the profile that they had on, on the new uh, edition of the magazine, and they came out with that price, forty five thousand dollars, which uh, would be impressive because this this one is a clear Tesla Model Y competitor. It's going to be in the same segment, which is a huge segment, of course. It's, it's crossover, small SUV thing. And at forty-five thousand dollars starting price, I'm not sure if that didn't, again, not much detail. So maybe that could be after incentive. Uh, and Audi, of course, still has access to the seventy-five hundred dollars uh, federal tax credit in the U.S. But if it's before incentive, that would be a great, very aggressive price. I mean, in comparison, yeah, right now, crazy. what's the the cheapest Model Y right now starts at forty-three thousand dollars. Fifty fifty three thousand dollars. I mean, so if it's after incentive, it would be similar price. Uh, also, it's more likely. They're talking about uh, eighty two kilowatt hour battery pack in that thing, so it'll be a slightly bigger battery pack than the new long range version of the Model Y. But of course, how the if, if it's the same as the bigger e tron SUV, uh, the efficiency is not that great. Though they made some improvement to it. So, so even though a slightly bigger battery pack, uh, the official EPA range most likely is going to be a bit shorter. All right, that's it for us on the new side. We're going to go through the questions right now. All right. Uh, awesome. Make sure to put them in the comment below. Yeah, make sure you add your comment right now if you want to get on. Mm -hmm. um, greetings from California. Uh, what are you thinking for Model Y production per week? I think a thousand was what we were hoping for. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, with the shutdown, it's like so hard to see. Like, even if they achieve like a thousand a week, like because they did say that the ramp up is much faster than uh, the Model Three, and even faster than Model Three in China, which was super fast. So it's not impossible to believe that like end of March, Tesla was hitting like close to thousand Model Y per week. But getting back to it with all the supply chain too and everything, like that's so hard to tell right now. So. I don't know. All right. Uh, we have some fans. Mm. What's involved to get uh, Tesla cars to provide electricity to the house? Isn't it the Cybertruck going to have a 240 volt outlet? Um, this is from Jay Hill. I think uh, what we're talking about is vehicle to home or vehicle to grid. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about uh, DC coming out of the, the car. So theoretically, um, your Tesla charge port would have a reverse uh, electric where it would go uh, from your car to your inverter, like you, you have a solar inverter or whatever, mm -hmm. and then that would put it into the house. Um, so the 240 outlet um, would be good in, in the scenario, like, you, you know, like a backup generator, like the mm -hmm. one in your backyard. Uh, we're looking for something more um, kind of refined where you don't even have to do anything. Like, instead of running outside, plugging in, the, the the car what would happen is instead of your car charging it would stop charging and it would start sending power back into the house um and i think that's where everything is going i just don't know like who's going to get there first and how long it's going to take to get there yeah well, if you if you if you ask here jay hill as uh what's involved uh maybe he's asking like what, what kind of hardware like it would be like some kind of bi-directional charger that we we've seen before like uh what was it like quasar that from wallbox right quasar yeah. quasar yeah so it would be like some kind like, like you said something that doesn't involve anything you just plug it in and then it, it's part of it's it's an energy storage asset part of your home electrical system that would that would be really the, the best and i think the, the trying the, the word they're using for that right now would be some kind of bi-directional charger that already has the inverter inside um and distribute the electricity to to, to your electrical system yeah and some chatamo vehicles like uh the nissan leaf and mitsubishi outlander can do that today mm -hmm. yeah um, if you have the hardware so it's mm -hmm. it's coming 
All right, uh, Marwan Tabat says, you think Sunrun News is in preparation for to some major announcements on Battery Day? Um, Sunrun announced that they were going to use Tesla's batteries, which is good news for Tesla and Sunrun, because Sunrun yeah. is now the biggest U.S. manufacturer um, installer of solar panels. Uh, residential think? market, yeah. The bigger in the U.S. for residential market, uh, which is what the power wall is used for. So uh, if you guys remember back in 2016, like before the acquisition of Solar City, Sunrun was actually using the power wall. But that was before Tesla acquired Solar City and became like a competitor to Sunrun. <laughs> so once that happened, Sunrun partnered with LG Cam to to use their uh, Rezu, something like that they call it, their own battery pack. But it doesn't compete with with the power wall really. Like it's, I think we're talking about like nine point three kilowatt hour versus like thirteen point five for the for, for the power wall, and that's with a cheaper base price not even per kilowatt hour just the price of the unit itself is cheaper for tesla so um really good move for some run to just bite the bullet and like all right Tesla's a competitor now but we are bigger than them in terms of installations so let's just admit that they have a better product here and, and use it in our bigger uh solar deploying capacity now marwan tabit has a point where like because uh, I mean, where he's driving at, I think, is that Tesla is as difficulties delivering the power wall right now. Like they, they have more, way more demand than they can supply. So what, why put another like giant installer like Sunrun to to be involved in deploying the product if they can barely deliver it? Yes, in battery day there might be some some aspect to it that confirm that Tesla can ramp up faster their energy storage production uh, with their in-house cell or with new suppliers. So I think that could be part of it for sure. All right. Uh, so Devion89 says Elon seems to be following the same path as Nikola Tesla, which uh, doesn't seem to be that great. Um, yeah, I think he's a reference to Nikola Tesla ending his life with being in love with a pigeon and uh, dying alone in a hotel room. It did get a little weird at the end there for him. Yeah. Um, da Vinci says battery day will only be about having secured raw material supply chain for terawatt hour production. They won't reveal new battery tech and say, don't buy Model Three Y because in two years they are obsolete. All right. No, that won't be just it. <laughs> they will talk about the new batch itself for sure. Uh, certainly not just for the raw material. Uh, Jay Hill also in Las Vegas. Solar City is much cheaper for roof panels and batteries. The competitors are all bad mouthing Solar City as a commodity product product industry now. Uh, will there be a Powerwall Three? Uh, so yes. I think Tesla doesn't exist though anymore. So you right. can be bad mothing them all they want. It's like <laughs> right branding wise, they yeah. don't exist anymore. Yeah. Um, but Tesla has commoditized. You know, you you just buy like one, two, three, four, whatever, and you put it on your roof. Um, but that's that's a way to get the price down and get more people involved. Um, what do you think about Powerwall three? Like, what's what's coming in the Powerwall scene? I think they keep they keep making improvement to it. Like. That. Um, so I'm not sure what they would need to call it a power wall three because like power wall one, power wall two, there was a clear like design change too. It also made some improvement in terms of capacity went like way up, but um, there was a design change too. So I, I don't know, like uh, maybe something that involves like the a bi-directional charger that would be nice. I was thinking the same thing. You're more like a caching thing. Um, all right, uh, this guy, Deviant Developer, says solar and battery are red herrings. Solar is an awful way to generate grid electricity. All right. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. In the UK, the real coronavirus data is heavily disguised. The government is in total disarray. Elon was right on about the data. Clear, accurate data will inform public debate properly. I'm not arguing that with that. I think that's mm -hmm. right. Uh, better data is always going to be better, but I think the data might be wrong in the in another direction where like if if they you look at total deaths um and then you take coronavirus deaths out of it there's still a lot more deaths happening right now in a lot of places most places um so and there's a lot fewer people dying on the roads a lot fewer people dying you know out and about a lot fewer crime you know crime in general going on so I'm I'm all for better data. I just think that uh, his narrative is that there's fewer people dying of coronavirus. I think there might be more. I mean, who knows? Uh, but we all agree. I think that more data, better data, is better data. 
is better. What do you think? Anything down oh, there? I agree. I agree 100%. All right. Uh, Kobe Ka says, uh, what do you guys think about Volkswagen's EV program? Would you call the Waggy a buy? Uh, What's uh, is that the, the stock? The stock? I think so. Uh, I didn't know that was the ticker of the stock. I uh, uh, cannot recommend personally. I haven't looked at their financials for, for a while. So and I, don't, I don't know where the stock trades at right now. So I, I really don't know it's a lot. But if you're asking in general about a Volkswagen EV program, I'm certainly more bullish on Volkswagen than uh, any other established automaker right now. Agree. Uh, in, in terms of EVs, like they're clearly the one that are taking it more seriously at all levels. I, I like their partnership with Nordvolt for battery cells. Like they re, they're really looking at it. Like they they really. It, it's like what they're basically where Tesla was. I would say like five years ago, six years ago, something like that. But with money, like that, that's the difference. <laughs> like they already have money and they already have a large infrastructure behind it. So they're definitely still way behind Tesla, but they they are way better positioned to catch up with them faster because they have already a giant infrastructure and money behind them. But but everything else, like they're thinking the right way. They're thinking like like Tesla. Like we a few weeks ago when we reported on the software thing where they admit Tesla is years ahead. That that those are good thing that shows that they are aware of the situation. They're not um, they're they're not going into it with blinders on like other automakers where right. they they don't don't really believe in the future of electric vehicles and they're just doing it because it's the trendy thing to do right now. Uh, Volkswagen is doing all the right moves, I think. Yeah. So in short, I think Volkswagen, I, I think everybody's talking the talk, but I think mm -hmm. Volkswagen's walking the walk of, uh, you know, the transition to electric vehicles mm -hmm. remains to be seen uh, if the other automakers kind of jump on board or not, but mm -hmm. it's definitely seems like Volkswagen's making it happen. Uh, Philip Lavoie says, have you heard if Jay Leno's Garage May 20th episode is the Cybertruck episode? I don't know the date of it. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, though. I just said on a podcast, Jay Leno, that they actually drove the Cybertruck through the Boring Company tunnel. Um, so it, probably, it looks like they had fun with the prototype. So <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that episode. Uh, Scott Mendoza, did you already talk about if Fremont Factory is open today? We did uh, go back to the beginning, but yeah. um, it sounds like they planned on opening it, and then uh, the Alameda County officials said, whoa, 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 whoa. We never gave the go-ahead. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tesla probably going to try to push that as far as they can, get get managers in, maybe you know, start moving some stuff around, preparing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Philip Lavoy says, Fred, where are the Model X videos this weekend, right? Yeah, I'm going to try to post it tomorrow if all goes well, depending on, uh, like, I'm on... I'm editing it right now. <laughs> I'm not the best editor at all, so I'm taking a little bit slower. But most of it is done now. So if not on Saturday, like if it, I can only post it late on Saturday, it's not going to be worth it. Uh, I'm going to be next week, early next week. But uh, I'm going to try for tomorrow. All right. Mo Herbert or Hebert says, I thought Elon would give his kids some cultural name after the planet Mars. We didn't talk about that, but uh, we kind of called the name. Like we said that it's going to be. <laughs> you did say that last week. It was going to be like the the Space Invaders sound was going to be the first na <laughs> first name, and then a stepping on a bird was going to be the middle name. So I think we called it. Um, so what is it? It's X A E X twelve. Uh, yeah, but it's A E is supposed to be Ash, and then the yeah. X twelve stands for Archangel, which is the. Mm -hmm. Pre pre predecessor to the SR71 Blackbird. I will say Elon owns X.com and the kid's first name is X. So he's already got the domain for his kid, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, every dad wants to make sure they have that knocked out. Um, anyway, of course, of course, they named it the weirdest name possible. Mm. Uh, Gary Evans, more than a thousand orders per day for Model Three in China. Need another factory in Asia. Uh, I, I I looked into that report and I wasn't I wasn't convinced by it. Uh, may, maybe may, maybe not, but it sounded like it was a particular thing after like an, an event or something. Uh, we we know that Tesla did the big stream in China a few days ago too. So uh, I, it's not I'm not sure it's just like the way they framed it as a thousand order per day. That that would mean. Like it's sustainable. Like you're doing that like every day, and uh, and I wasn't, I wasn't convinced by that. 
Uh, Joel Sapp says, will you be stream live streaming during the Battery Investor Day if you don't go? Um, that would be fun, but we're probably also going to be writing a bunch of posts, so uh, maybe not. Uh, I would love to do something like that, like a play-by-play. -play. But uh, yeah, I don't think people wants to. Yeah, I don't think people wants to listen to us talk over watching the stream. Yeah, right. No. Uh, Pawan Bajoria says, when and where is the Cybertruck factory location announcement going to happen? I I don't know where. It sounds like Texas, and when is probably in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, by the end of the month, apparently. Like so around the time that they're gonna do that battery day announcement, so they might combine the two. We'll see. But thanks a lot for listening, everyone. Please give us a thumbs up if you like the show. Uh, it helps us a lot with the YouTube algorithm and whatnot. Uh, you can uh, give us a subscribe button too. We have more videos coming soon uh, in your podcast app. You can always give us a review. That also helps a lot. And uh, we're going to see you same place, same time next week. Ciao.